Welcome back to Morgan's video blog, Morgan's online blog in video format. Today I'm here to share with you portrayals of mental health in genre fiction. So portrayals of mental illnesses have come a long way from accuracy to um, variety to ending stereotypes. In the titular panel at Worldcon 2019, Alistair Stewart, Penny Jones, Dr. Glenn Morgan, and Devin Madsen discuss who gets it right and who gets it wrong. So why are there more portrayals of mental illness in genre fiction than in the past? Um, so first off, people are more comfortable discussing it. Secondly, nearly everyone in the world will at some point suffer some sort of mental illness, even if it's just temporary from stress or grief. We all have things that happen to us that are harder to process. And some of us have brain chemistry that just isn't cooperative. Uh, thirdly, people are being rewarded for opening the discussion. People want to be heard, they want to share, they want to get help. And fourth, the, which leads into this, is the audience is welcoming. So what informed the older portrayals of mental illness? First off, mental illness as a reaction to trauma was kind of accepted, partially because it had an external reason that people could be like, oh, this happens and then the person suffers. Um, rather than true mental illness, which can be instigated by a variety of causes and isn't necessarily something that you earn by dealing with, you know, war or whatever. Uh, speaking of, a uh, famous example of someone who worked through their trauma in genre fiction is Rod Sterling of the original Twilight Zone series. His work was often based on his World War II experiences and many of the characters were named after friends he'd lost. So another way that older genre fiction portrayed mental illness is very often you'd find the murderer or the manic pixie guy. Um, they were given mental illnesses as a reason why they weren't normal or why they would do horrific things. It was used as an excuse because clearly normal people don't do horrific things. Spoiler alert, they do. Some people are just holes. Yeah. So let's talk about who in genre fiction has got it wrong. Um, these are more recent because there has been progress and calling out a lot of the older works is just uh, I almost want to say unfair but society and the culture wasn't there and so the writers reflect their period for right or wrong. So some illnesses are hard to make palatable like schizophrenia. Some are misused or misrepresented like psychopaths and some start off strong as good representations and then the writer or, you know, the cast stumbles and disappoints us. Many people have pointed out Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory. Um, he seems, he comes across as very Asperger's, autistic, somewhere on the spectrum, but the writers claim it's not, so they're clearly not negatively portraying autism. Right. Uh, secondly, Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy. So many people were really excited about great representation in the first movie, and then he got kind of dumped with just comic relief in the later films. I, I understand there were a lot of characters and it was hard to give everyone personal growth, but the writers kind of dropped the ball a little on that one. They could have done much more with that character. Thirdly, this one's a little disputed, but Fat Thor in the uh, Endgame movie. 
many fans are debating if his, you know, depression and weight gain was used as a punchline or showing that people can suffer and still be worthy. You can easily argue both, so I'm gonna stay out of that one for now. And finally, the trope of the magical lab technician, like in CSI and House and that sort of show, very often you have a technician or um, a doctor who has a mental illness and it's used as a plot device to just, woo, his illness is why he spots this thing and solves all the things. No, no, that's, that's not really how it works. You, you can't just use it as a plot device when it's convenient. So who got it right? These were all suggestions from the panelists. City in the Middle of the Night by J Charlie Jane Anders uh, shows PTSD. The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Cowell shows anxiety. Cities of City of Laws was mentioned, but I don't know if that was a book or an audio drama or show if anybody knows let me know in the comments below uh, next up were a series of audio dramas that were highly suggested um, you can find them on podcasts servers station blue uh, shows bipolar the far meridian bright sessions which it's about a therapy group and empathy and that sort of thing and gone uh, with people running low on meds, etc. Fun fact, looking up a link for Gone, where all you know is it's an audio drama. Little tricky with those keywords. Uh, but there's a link below for all of these. Next up, Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King. Stephen King doesn't always portray mental illness um, without falling into stereotypes, but this one was given as an example of one of his better works. Uh, Hereditary is a horror movie that recently came out and it deals with psychosis. Um, the American Horror Story series on TV was mentioned. Vast Horizon shows PTSD. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. The Crow Garden. Final Approach. Shutter Island. Shutter with two T's, not D's. Um, Planet Fall by Emma Newman and uh, a lot of Emma Donahue's work. So, what do people want to see more of? People want to see more, just more mental illnesses, different portrayals, a variety, just more. Secondly, people want to see more Asperger's. A lot of people relate to that and they want to see it well done and they want to see a variety of ways it can portray itself rather than this is exactly what it looks like. Because once you know one person with Asperger's, you know one person with Asperger's. All people are different. So uh, another thing people would like to see more of in their genre fiction is better portrayals of early treatment and how helpful it can be before things hit the crisis level. Because so often people are like, oh, I don't really need help. I haven't hit a crisis. You know, I'm not that bad. It's not that hard. And so they minimize their symptoms and they don't get help until they reach that crisis point. And by showing people what are the warning signs and how treatment can help before you hit rock bottom would go a great way into helping people not have to pick up their lives again and just um, keep relationships, you know, healthy. Uh, another thing people would like to see more of is trauma not being resolved easily unless it's a character quirk, which is what we see too much of in a lot of fiction. Uh, another thing is relapse should not be seen as a failure. Every single day you're, that you have a mental illness, you are working to overcome it. And sometimes you just can't overcome. And just because you have a relapse doesn't mean that you failed. It just means that you need help and you need support. And 
you're sick and you're gonna get better if people help you if you can get the support you need i know and a final thing people ask for is more portrayal of postpartum depression because it's a real thing and a lot of new mothers feel very isolated they're going from very often they have jobs they're outside of the house and then they have this baby and they're in the house and no matter how excited they are it's not going smoothly because it never does um, they're not getting any sleep they're feeling isolated and all of these factors and the fact that all the endorphins and stuff they had when they were pregnant are not really there anymore can can really trigger depression and people need to know that this is a serious issue so a final question from the audience for the panel was discussing how mental illness is a sign of its time what the diagnoses are and what you know the environment promotes some illnesses are triggered by environmental factors some are diagnosed based on limited information uh, so the panel discussed how mental illnesses used to be designated and what the future might hold for humanity first off we might end up with different diagnoses than we have now we used to think epilepsy was a mental illness or demonic possession but now we know it's the brain misfiring and we know how to treat it and we can make people living with epilepsy's lives easier and healthier and we we know cause and effect uh, so one of the things that the panelists saw for future mental illness issues is isolation so much of our lives are now virtual and that could have a pretty strong effect on people there's already you know discussion about being touch starved when you haven't hugged anyone or you know been near someone who would even shake your hand and that can be really isolating and you know something that real people struggle with and i think that the panelists were right on the money with that one so let me know in the comments below what about you where do you see genre fiction getting mental illness right these days where do you see it messing up what do you want to see more of and what do you think the future will hold for mental health let me know in the comments below as always thank you for tuning in and i'll be back again next week with more writing tips and writerly musings Bye bye